Here's how I would become a data analyst in six months going into the year 2025, even if I have no experience, no coding background, no degree, no connections. My goal for this video is to give you a six month action packed plan. I wanna give you a dirty little secret that becoming a data analyst actually doesn't have to take years. And so there's no reason to go back and get your masters. I'm gonna show you how you can do it with tools that you have available to you right now. My name is Chris Carzone. I'm the CEO and founder of Data Engineer Academy. And I have been a data engineer at Amazon, at Lyft, at startups, and I've been an angel investor for a bunch of data related companies as well. I want to introduce to you uh, the foundations, the next level skills you need to learn, the advanced level skills you need to learn, how to actually gain experience, quote unquote, and then finally, the job preparation process and the application process, because at the end of the day, you can learn for years, months, if you don't get the job and you don't get that result. Does it really matter, right? The first thing I would do in month one in the six month plan is learn the foundations. Very simple. As a data analyst, you need to know SQL, Excel, dashboarding. Doesn't matter about AI. Don't listen to what the news tell you. You still need to know those three. And the reason we know this is because we talk to hiring managers and we also help a lot of clients try to break into the data space and we can tell you with 100% certainty that you're going to have to face those interview rounds during the application process, during the interview stage. So you need to learn it. The good news is there is hundreds, if not thousands of free SQL courses out there. By the way, we have one ourselves, shameless plug at dataengineeracademy.com. SQL, dashboarding, Excel, learn the foundation. And by the way, one of the things I would say about the foundational skills is soft skills, communication skills. If you don't have that, or if you've ever had a friend tell you like, hey, you might not be the best communicator, you might ramble, it's hard to understand you. Um, that's probably a course or something I would work on getting as well in your free time. So just keep that in mind. Now, month two. Here's where you start to actually take some skills, learn a few more skills to actually make you stand out from the crowd. This is where Python comes in handy because you don't need to know Python to become a data analyst, but if you can prove that you know Python, then what happens is you're able to apply to maybe twice as many roles, right? Again, we see, I don't know, 10,000 resumes a month. Like we know what the competition looks like specifically in the data space. Python alone will make you stand out, but there's two types of Pythons. There's the Pythons that focus on data frames. So Pandas, think Pandas, for example, and a lot of new libraries and technologies that are coming out, but let's just say Pandas for now, because that's the most common. Um, and then the other one is like these leak code algorithm type of questions in the Python interview realm. And so you can do both if you have the time, if you're learning quickly, if you're enjoying it, I would say do both, but at least do data frames. That's what I would really focus on at month two, because there are a decent amount of data analyst jobs out there uh, that just learning that would open the door. And so that's something that I think will make you stand out ahead of your competition. Month three, this is where I would start to take what you've learned and try to build something in the real world. The thing is, while recruiters might not click on GitHub links because they just don't have time or they don't know, what they are doing is they're looking at keywords. And this is a whole different topic because resume preparation, that's just something I can go on and on about, right? We have a lot of data, a lot of stats about that. But the reality is um, for this topic, what you need to know is Recruiters are still going to look for the keywords in your resume and they're going to scan that very quickly after the machine learning algorithms do that as well. And so real projects do matter because then you can showcase what you've done on your own time. And so when I say real world projects, in my mind, I'm thinking Kaggle. I'm thinking projects that you find online, projects that you buy, some projects that maybe you're being able to do on your free time or even at work or even one that your friend gives you access to. Maybe they work at the same company. Maybe they work at a different company, right? Get creative about how you showcase experience. I talked about this in another video, um, how to transition from data analyst to data engineer. And so, you know, that video is really, really good if you're already a data analyst, but very similar concepts apply because you can still go from non-tech to tech, non-tech to data analyst, and the same advice still applies. 
get creative about how you showcase experience. And so that's month number three. You've learned a bunch. Now put it in a resume and make sure that you can talk about it during the interview phase. Month number four. This is one where I think a lot of people are forgetting about. This is what I tell my clients. Don't just become good enough to become a data analyst. Become good enough to become a senior data analyst or even more. And in many cases, more for us is defined as a data engineer. The reason I say this is because, again, we've seen tens of thousands of resumes. And what I can tell you with absolute certainty is that less than 1% of people applying to a data analyst role, whether they've been in tech or not in tech, they don't have something like cloud. They don't have something like machine learning algorithms. They don't have something like data science work. If you can go above and beyond and not just learn the foundations, because think about it, it's called the foundations for a reason. If it's called the foundations, it means everybody knows that stuff already. So you're competing with basically the same thing everybody has in their resume. If you can go one or even two levels above that, right? Think about where you want to be in five to 10 years, learn that, and then put that in your resume. That's going to make you stand out. Because what happens psychologically for the company is that they feel like they're getting more for less. And by the way, every business owner, every hiring manager, every team wants to feel that way. And again, you can take all the advice I've given for month one, two, and three, and apply it into this month four so that you can learn advanced techniques. Here's one caveat though. There's one thing, one mistake that people make, and that's overdoing it. Because again, remember, if you're applying for a data analyst position, you don't have to learn this stuff for the interview, right? If you want to learn machine learning or data engineering things, well, the mistake that people make is they go off and then they get a bunch of certificates or courses for the next two years. That is a waste of time because this stuff, these topics will not be in the data analyst interview. That would be my month four, which again leads me to step number five. Step number five is the job preparation. The resume is your marketing. The sales are your interview skills. And so with the resume, this is why it's so important not to overdo doing advanced stuff because again, it's for your resume, it's for the marketing, but it's not going to be in the interview. So let's say you do have a good resume. The interview process itself, you have to learn the soft skills. The number one round where we see clients fail is actually the soft round, the behavioral questions, because they've spent eight 80% of their time prepping for the technical skills and stressing about it that they forgot how to be a human or how to communicate or how to be charismatic during an interview, how to build trust, how to ask questions that make you actually come off analytical and intelligent as opposed to just sounding like a robot with a script and going off. A lot of people are surprised to hear that behavioral questions are the part that stumps a lot of people. And here's the dirty little secret. More than 50% of the interview, especially for a data analyst role, is going to be non-technical. So if you're spending only 10% studying the soft skills, you're doing something wrong. And then the final question I get before jumping into month six um, for month five is, okay, well, at this point, should I have a few certificates? If you have it, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter, right? There's no recruiter looking at it and being like, this is a requirement. It just doesn't exist. And so... Trust me, we've seen clients coming out of college, getting a job as a data engineer for 150 grand with no certificates. It doesn't matter. And so if they can do that, then you can easily get a data analyst role without a certificate. So that leads me to the last and final month, month six. Here's what I would do. I would go heavy with the application process. A lot of people underestimate how much effort that part is because getting a job is almost a full-time job in today's market. I do have to apply to a lot of applications, but that's not the only thing you should be doing because let's face it, that's kind of like banging your head on the wall. You should also be reaching out to recruiters, not just on LinkedIn, but on email. And if you have the guts, phone call, I think they'd be surprised to see someone go that far, but it would show initiative. Just a thought. Uh, the other thing you should do is look at your contact. I talked about this in a different video, but look at the contacts in your phone and ask them to refer you or ask them to connect you with somebody who might know somebody who might know somebody, right? Just think about reaching out to the contacts on your phone. Um, and then finally, network, right? You can, there's a bunch of networking events that you can go to that are absolutely for free. 
uh, look it up. It's probably in your city, right? Tech events, anything along that line. You'll meet recruiters, you'll meet hiring managers, you'll meet current employees, you'll get referrals. You can do the virtual version of meetups as well. You can go into um, threads like Blind, right? That's solely for tech uh, people. Maybe you might be able to go to Reddit or your social medias and say like, hey, does anyone know anyone at this company that can refer me, right? Because at this point, you are in the hustling phase. You've spent the first five months learning, prepping for the interview, becoming more advanced in the role that you're going for, which is great, but that does not mean the job is just gonna land in your lap. You have to go out and go get it, and that's month six. And it's probably gonna take you a full month just to line up a bunch of interviews, and at that point, you can go and ace the interview with confidence and get your role. If you do want to get somebody to help you, we've been able to help approaching a thousand people land their next or better data related career. And so you can click on the link below. And if not, like, subscribe, share, and help us get as many people a better job in the data space as possible.